FEW um, is obviously an acronym for the Forum for the Empowerment of Women, which works to advance um, the rights of LGBTI persons in South Africa as well as protect those rights. So Eto Pride was started uh, in 2004. Um, and one of the reasons that uh, it came about, it started because um, there was Joba Pride, right, which was in Rosebank, and a lot of LGBTI people, uh, especially black, uh, could not access um, Rosebank because, for one, uh, to get to Rosebank you have to take two taxis. Um, the space was closed in. At some point there was a payment entrance that you have to pay and, you know, so you don't bring anything. Now, for someone that um, is uh, financially challenged, that that is a problem, right? So it was um, a vehicle that would, you know, challenge the discrimination that happens in our township, but at the same time, uh, kind of claiming our township and our streets and saying we are here, we want to be visible, uh, but we also want to celebrate in, in that collective. We're trying to create really a social space where people feel, you know, they can be themselves without being intimidated or persecuted within their own communities and, and to also increase that visibility. Every year, when we organize Soweto Pride, we are required to apply for categorization of the event, right? This is according to state legislation um, commonly, commonly known as SASREA, which governs sports and recreational events. Um, so what normally happens is upon the application, then um, the SAPS will then categorize your event as low risk, medium risk or high risk, depending on a number of factors. So Soweto Pride for the past 11 years has been categorized as low risk. This year upon our application we were informed um, that we have been categorized as medium risk. So this became a, a bit of an issue for us because according to the CESRA Act there are a number of restrictions and conditions that can be imposed on an event that is medium risk. This year we were met um, with a number of conditions. Um, you know, one of the main conditions was the fact that um, we were advised that we have to, for example, look into the option of charging people um, to enter into Soweto Pride. Um, this was apparently a means to control, you know, the crowd, but, you know, we felt that there could have been other avenues that could have been explored. Um, we were also um, tasked with conditions such as we were informed that there might be some JMPD officers that needed to be present in the event, you know, at the park after the march throughout the entire event, you know, and, and we felt a bit uncomfortable with that because the undertones of it uh, really speak to, to the policing of queer bodies. The theme was Our Lives Matter. Um, safety, justice and freedom, our rights. And the theme talks to, for example, the, the, the fact that uh, gay people, LGBTI people are, are targeted in communities. Um, cases of hate crimes are increasing, uh, not just in Soweto, but around, you know, a number of communities. Viva diversity, viva! The question of uh, paying for venue is a big problem because Soweto Pride was started precisely to address those issues, right? Um, in, uh, was it three years ago, we protested with one in nine to challenge the Jope Pride around these issues of, you know, um, space not being accessible to everyone, but also um, talking about issues of politics. We feel if we are going to now go back to those kinds of demands that uh, the state puts and uh, as organizers because we want this event to continue, we then comply, then it becomes problematic. It's important to note that um, these, you know, conditions may be perhaps reasonable for a commercial event, you know, but this is, is an event that is uh, pushed by a very small organization of about four staff members, you know, it's very under-resourced and, and Soweto Pride is, is partially sponsored, but, you know, it, it, we do not have the capacity, you know, we do not have the money for that. We put out a petition. I uh, would like people to uh, engage with that um, and, and submit their uh, signatures. Um, 
and we would also like I mean we need support uh, in, in organizing this event uh, so people that have different skills they can you know come in and volunteer their time um, whilst we're planning this event. We are in the process of petitioning the National Commissioner but as well as roping in you know the Mayor's office as well as our Premier because we feel that though this year it has led to the postponement of Soweto Pride people must also understand that this is not the first time that we actually face this. I think this year was the year that we decided you know something needs to be done about it because we feel that perhaps if we just comply with the conditions you know it even changes the very essence of pride.